Dr. Karen with this week's Hot Topic. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on social media so you never miss another Hot Topic. So today I want to talk to you about a doom scrolling. So doom scrolling or doom surfing are new terms uh, referring to the tendency to continue to surf or scroll through bad news even though its news is saddening, disheartening, or depressing. Uh, so many people are finding themselves reading continuously bad news about everything going on in the world without the ability to stop or just take a step back. So chances are at some point you've actually found yourself doing this and it's an unending scroll in this harsh light of your smartphone or your computer screen, uh, whatever kind of social media. So it's Facebook, Google, any other number of places that you might subject yourself to a constant stream of terrible news. Why do we do this? But surprise, this doom scrolling isn't really good for your mental health for a lot of reasons. So first things, why do we do it? So we might be telling ourselves that we're staying informed, but really there's something deeper that's going on. We find ourselves constantly scrolling through this social media and bad news headlines. So if you're depressed, you often look for information that can confirm how you're feeling. If you're feeling negative, then reading negative news kind of reconfirms how you're also doing. So it's just kind of that same mindset. You look for something to reinforce what you're actually feeling. But if you do this a few times, it can actually become a habit. And if you're continuously scrolling, it becomes a mindless habit. So a lot of the times you might not even be aware that you're doing this, but it's such a habit that if you have a down moment, you actually might pick up that phone, start scrolling without even really being aware of it or really even paying attention to it. Um, so that doom scrolling can actually be a function of obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD. So in that scenario, your brain actually Actually continues to kind of loop around in a particular similar situation um, to this just endless scrolling so that behavior is not really about finding news it's kind of about reducing your anxiety so see how this can lead into a problem so why is it bad can reinforce that negative thoughts, um, that negative mindset, something that can generally impact your mental health. So consuming negative news has been linked to greater fear, stress, and anxiety and sadness of just things in general. So if you're prone to anxiety, depression, or sadness, doom scrolling can actually be like stepping into quicksand. So it's just this negative thing can pull you under, it leads to panic attacks, and just make it so much worse. So when you're anxious, it's hard to turn your mind off and go to sleep, but another risk factor of doom scrolling is that it has potential to create what's called this crazy making. So in other words, you might see one set of information on a media outlet or social media, but then the very next source that you find might give you completely and conflicting information, and your mind just really has a hard time uh, trying to reconcile this information and figure out which one's good, which one's bad. Um, it's also a big downside to simply being online too much. So any too much time on social media, whether it's good news or bad news, is actually linked to feelings of depression. So being locked on a screen um, can actually decrease your energy, leave you feeling drained. So what's happening biologically is if you're actually feeding your brain continual stream of cortisol, which is that stress hormone, which we've talked about before. So over time, the brain and the body become super exhausted by the high levels of that stress hormone or the cortisol. So it breaks down, which leads to health problems and mental issues. So here's some really quick tips for ditching that doom scrolling that can gently alter your behavior so that you can make sure that you set up some healthier patterns of mindfulness and nudes consumption. So the first one is localize your behavior. So basically localizing means if um, you set it to a specific time or place. So if you're scrolling first thing in the morning, uh, put your phone on the other side of your bed so you can't easily pick it up um, before you get out. So it kind of recreates the different routine in the morning. Second thing is use mindfulness. So be mindful of how particular particular article makes you feel when you're scrolling. You can also avoid um, being catastrophic with everything. So when your mind just jumps to these worst case scenarios, um, these are thoughts that are often not possible and really not realistic. So the fourth thing is practice thought stopping. So thought stopping is cognitive behavior technique, which typically is used to ending OCD. So when you have this hard time turning off a certain thought, just imagine that you're putting a red stop sign. Uh, really the power for imagination is helpful in curbing your thinking. So so if you feel like you're checking your phone consciously, not compulsively, um, compulsive checking is something that you do automatically when you don't even put too much thought in it. So when you pick up your phone, just pause for a second and be mindful of what you're actually doing. Uh, the fifth thing is you can slow the scroll. So if you can't stop scrolling, consider slowing down the pace so you can actually read what you're doing. Um, mantras. So you can actually have a news that can lead to uh, to feel hopeless or down. So if you have these positive mantras or saying or slogans throughout your workplace, um, this can actually help keep you in a better positive mind and point you in the right direction. 
The seventh is focus on the now. So you can't control what's gonna happen in the future, you can't change the past, but you can actually control what's happening now. So ask yourself, is this gonna help you feel better in this particular moment? Um, eight is just have honesty. So be honest with yourself about what's really the root of your scrolling. So are you looking for that reassurance, that guidance confirming your fears? Um, are you feeling lonely, looking for a more lasting healing intervention or be able to compete or to connect with somebody? Um, nine, so have digital wellness apps. So yes, I am talking about technology being part of this problem with the doom scrolling, but it can actually help be part of the solution. So there's a lot of wellness apps are out there um, that can set time limits on certain apps or alarms on your phone to set certain boundaries, um, can cut you off on certain social medias when you've spent too much time. Um, you can actually unfollow negative news sources that tend to make you anxious and limit the number of number of sources that you actually look at. Uh, so put a cap on the number of sites you consult in one particular day. So there are apps that you can do. Uh, the 10th thing is look at the bigger picture picture. So sometimes when we look at news, um, it can be positive or can give you a different perspective. And then the 11th thing is really just disconnect yourself um, and just be present and mindful in the moment. Um, also doing exercises, deep breathing can give your body that mind and a rest and helps relax your muscles. Um, so exercise actually can be shown to help um, to pump up your serotonin levels, which is that feel good neurotransmitter in your brain, which I've done a hot topic on this before about exercise and different hormones, neurotransmitters and all that so that in a nutshell is doom scrolling it's affecting most of us um, you see these kids I mean not just kids but adults and they're just constantly scrolling through and you don't even know what you're looking at um, but just know that it is taking a huge hit on your mental health and wellness um, so now is always a good time to start. Remember, you can change things in the moment, not in the future, not in the past, but just in your current moment. So that's all I have for you guys this week. I will see you guys next time.